I think we're heading into, it was actually uh, the famous venture capitalist John Doerr uh, coined a phrase earlier this week at a, uh, a conference in New York where he's talking about the third wave of the internet, which is basically, if you think about when the personal computer came in and the microchip, the web started off very small and it was all about the interpersonal relationships between people. It was sort of, uh, you know, nerdy people sending emails to each other, use groups. It started off in a very kind of um, academic private capacity. Then we entered the second big uh, wave of the web in the mid 90s when the first commercial browser came in, companies like Amazon, Google, eBay came on the scene, the web became very big, very anonymous, very unpersonal. And then we saw the phenomenon of sort of, you know, the mass outbreak of the web, uh, we get into phase three and we've got things like Twitter, Google, Facebook, and we're really seeing how the web has both become about collective intelligence and harnessing all of this stuff that's going on. I mean, the way that I think about it is that the real world and the web have just actually merged. People have stopped talking about them as if they were different, which is actually um, kind of satisfying for me after talking about that for five or ten years. <laughs> but I think the other thing that's happening is even though we can now assume that we have the network effect of almost everybody being online, the web has also become extremely personal again. If you look at what's happening with um, the way people use social networks, it's all about connections and connecting the dots. I think what's really exciting about this uh, project for Ireland is that uh, though we have uh, search engines and we look at the, the, the torrents of data available on Twitter, the web is still about curated experiences. Thing, things like TED.com, it might have taken them 15 or 20 years, but they can reach hundreds of millions of people. I think that this, this concept of the platform, as Colm has said, is hugely important because you know, it would be really interesting to see what this website ends up being about with all these new devices. You know, the app environment is a, I think it was Gartner said it was going to be around a $6 billion industry this year. That was a product that didn't exist 18 months ago. Similarly, in terms of where time is spent on the web, uh, there's a great stat, stat from Mary Meeker which says that around just under 10% of all internet time is spent between YouTube and Facebook. And those are... Uh, products and companies that didn't even exist uh, four or five years ago. So that has massive implications for the way that people want to engage with content, the kind of content and the quality they expect. And this is personally very exciting for me because we sit on Barrow Street, we work with a lot of very exciting you know, entrepreneurial companies in Ireland doing business, we work with countries all over EMEA and I really you know, feel very passionate about this idea of taking the richness of Irish life and the diaspora online and really harnessing that and showcasing stuff that maybe doesn't get uh, showcased quite so easily. I mean, just to sum it up, with search, search is obviously a great barometer for what the world thinks, and I know we discussed some interesting insights about what people were searching for about Ireland that we'll chat about later on. Um, what about people who don't know what they're looking for? What about people who don't know about the GAA or the film board? How do they get into this, and how do we sort of, it's like meeting someone in a pub in a, in, you know, in, in a backpacker hostel, how do you start to share that experience of your vision for the country with them? And that's really very much what I think uh, that this project can do.